never imagined my public healing would inspire others to heal across the world. I thank you for using him to reach the world with the message of hope in relationships. But your life does not. God, you are my publicist. We laugh. <laughs> we share the unadulterated truth. He said, not only have I not divorced you, I ain't exposed you. Oh. We didn't marry fans, we married forever. And we wanted forever to act like a fan. Reveal her, Jesus. I will not compromise mm -mm. on getting a woman of God. You don't have to. And Father, I declare for his future wifey, thank you for preserving her. This season, I declare miracles and manifestations. See, you're selling scripts. And you're unique. You ain't like nobody else. I, I noticed that right away. You being true to who you are, you're going to attract. Mm. It's a Hebrew word, chayil, and it was translated wealth. And it means people, it means men, it means resources, and it means means. I'm Lateris R. Whitfield, and this is the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host, LaTerra Star Whitfield. We are on tour visiting churches and event centers all across the world. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How y'all doing? If you're still shacking up with us, why don't you hit that subscription button and subscribe. Make sure you turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified about upcoming episodes. Season six has been absolutely amazing. I've uh, nicknamed it Miracles and Manifestations because I'm believing that God is not only going to do uh, a miracle in my life, but that he's going to perform a miracle in the lives of all those that believe that he can. And uh, I'm believing that for you. Whatever you desire God to do, whether it's relational, whether it's financial, whether it's spiritual, uh, I want you to grab a hold of God in this season. Um, one thing I like to give props to is Pastor Evan for being a visionary, uh, for doing an episode like this. Y'all give it up for uh, the leader of this house. And a lot of times people, when you go into an unorthodox service, you wonder like, why are we doing, a, a, you know, why is there a podcast for a church service? But um, Revelations 12, 11 declares, they triumphed over him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. What that scripture means to me, we always leave out the last part that says they did not love their lives so much as not to shrink from death. Uh, we are so ashamed of some of the things that God brought us through that we shrink behind the testimony and, and, instead of allowing God to get glory from it. And so what I love about Pastor Evan and uh, today's guest they're going to be transparent, and they're going to share their journey to love in hopes that you glean insight, wisdom, encouragement, uh, and inspiration. And so, without further ado, give it up for my homies, Pastor Evan and Sharice Nix. So, as I stated, uh, why is this important for us to do an episode where we are showing your love journey, Pastor Evan? Well, uh, you know, when you're a public person, uh, your life is public. Right. And a lot of times, especially when it comes to pastors, people don't feel that pastors go through things. Mm -hmm. So I've, my church has watched me go through uh, a divorce. And so sometimes pastors don't allow their lives to be transparent enough for people to see them walk through it. Right. And so this is a good opportunity because they've seen the devastating piece. Now they get to see the blessing piece. There it is. There it is. There it is. Look at look at that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Uh, listen, what's so amazing and how instrumental God was in this whole journey is that you just so happened to uh, propose to a good friend of mine. You know, she's been uh, a close friend of mine of seven years. And um, she's the person who invited me to Word of Truth back on Easter of last year. And so just to watch this play out and have a front row seat of this is nothing short of your word, amazing, three words, amazing. Absolutely. And so I think that's so amazing. Um, but we're going to just deep dive right into this. Sharice Nix. Um, Sharice, I met her when my nephew, I was in the process of adopting him, and he was my, uh, he was in foster care. And... I lived in Cedar Hill, 
and my local school was a uh, plumber and she was a principal at Plummer Elementary and uh, I'm one of those parents that get really involved in the school and so I'm, I'm working with the PTA, I'm doing shirts and creating little uh, shops at the school or whatnot for the kids to be in, involved in business. And so uh, I just watched how Sharice moved and she moved like an amazing leader. So when I look at how God brought you through all that, um, and now you are in position to be the first lady of Word of True Church. Uh, it, it gets me really emotional because every position that she... Now, I'm going to let you know that, that Sharice is a boss. Like, she, she's a boss. So, uh, and when I say that, I don't say that lightly. Oftentimes, you see a woman get connected to a man of influence and success. Then you believe that her success is because of him. Or you say that her biggest accomplishment is him, per se. But what I love is when I meet boss women who have, you know, get it on their own. They, they're successful, intelligent, bright. Uh, and so every job that she, she went after as she changed the trajectory from principalship, uh, I was instrumental in creating the videos for marketing for her uh, as her online or video resume. And so uh, she's in a high position. At, uh, at, at a school district. Should I say the name? I guess it ain't no big deal. Yeah, so at Garland ISD, so she's in a high position at Garland ISD, one of the uh, top districts in the area. And um, you well, know can what? I add? Let me, let me just add this. Uh, uh, that school district has 55,000 students, and I think she's the second or third highest ranking African American person there it is. in that district. Yeah. So, I'm not rescuing her, <laughs> okay? She's got her own house, her own stuff, her own But we gonna stay safe right now. We gonna stay safe. We gonna stay safe. No, I just want people to know that, you know, she's in the six figures, so I don't want people to feel like, you know, because a lot of times, especially in the church world, not this church, though. Not this church, because, no, we're, we're not very judgmental because all of us have scars. There it is. So when you know you have a scar, you won't criticize somebody else's scar. So anyway. That's good. That's good. So, Cherise, uh, we're going we're gonna to go back and, and, and reverse engineer how you came to this moment. Uh, you've been married before in the past, right? I have. Uh, how many times have you been married? I've been married twice. You've been married twice. Let's, let's unpack the first marriage. How old were you when you got married the first time? When I got married the first time, I was 24 years old. And so the, the man that I married, we'd known each other for many years. We grew up together, um, junior high, high school. And so there was a familiarity around him. And um, when I graduated from college and came back home, we picked up and we got married. And so when he and I got married, um, in the beginning, we had the same level of commitment to Christ. We went to church together, we prayed together, we served in ministry together. And then shortly after, uh, the representative, no, it's shortly after, yeah. um, our commitment changed. Right. Um, and when someone's commitment changes, their actions change. Right. Their lifestyle changes. Their words change. The way you're treated is changed. Where yeah. they go changes. And so as we started struggling through our marriage, um, as those changes were happening, because I was a stronger Christian at the time, um, I did what I knew to do, and that was to pray, and that was to fast, and that was to cry, and that was to beg, and that was to do everything that I knew to do to Teresa, try. Were you running around anointing pillows and all? Let me tell you, I did. I anointed shoes, like, Lord, bless the, don't let them walk there, Lord. Don't <laughs> let them drive there, Lord. I was anointing, I'm, y'all, I'm serious. I anointed steering wheels. I'm serious. I would go to my closet, and I would just be in the prayer closet, and I would just pray, because I'm um, I'm a preacher's kid, and yeah. so I was raised with the standard of, of prayer and um, believing and trusting that God is going to work it out. And, um, and through that process, we still ended, ended up divorcing, and I felt like God had let me down. Yeah. I felt like God had disappointed me. I How long were y'all married? We were married for about eight, nine years. Okay. And so... Um, what I had to realize is that, you know, his decisions, those, that was his will. God's will can't overstep somebody's personal, will. Yeah. You know, their personal will. And so the choices that, you know, we both chose to make, 
you know, God's going to allow you to do that. And so I had to go through a very, very tough time with that marriage. All right. And so I met you shortly after uh, the first marriage dissolving. And I met you, and I remember around this time, it was around Valentine's Day. And um, I'm going to go and keep it lit. All right. So I met around Valentine's Day. And, you know, when you're at a school or whatnot, or even at your own job, you know, you see people getting gifts. You know, you see your coworkers getting teddy bears and chocolate and cupcakes and all that stuff. And I went to the school because I was very involved in the school. And you were in the office, and I was. I talked to your secretary. I was like, hey, I want to say hi to Sharice. And she was like, she, she, she's not in the mood right now. So I talked to you later on, and uh, it was a very tough time for you. Uh, do you remember that? No, but you're going to oh, tell I'm, I'm going to tell you. I'm, 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 <laughs> you're going to tell, tell my business. I'm going to tell you. Yeah, I'm going to tell you business. So what happened was you didn't get no gifts. You didn't get no gifts on Valentine's Day, and you were hurt. You were broken. And, um, and then God began to start speaking to me about your relationship. Now, I have a rule that if you're married, I won't tell you nothing about your relationship. If you're single, that's fair game. I'm going to tell you what's wrong. <laughs> I'm going to say, hey, let me tell you something. This is your warning before destruction. And so... And so, uh, but once you get married, no matter what I've said before that, my mouth is off your marriage because I believe that that's a protected space. Um, so I have some things to say. This is the second marriage. The second marriage. Okay. There's a second marriage. And so the second marriage, I told you, I said, uh, no, before I even tell you that, let's, let's, go, let's go reverse it. You started dating this gentleman. What made you decide to fall into a relationship with this gentleman? So after my first marriage, I, um, I was devastated, y'all. I'm not perfect by no means, but I've always been like the good girl. And I've always been a church girl. I've always done what I was supposed to do. I, you know, I just, I just did. I was a, lived a Christian life. And so when I divorced and I felt like God didn't hear me, he didn't remember me, I really turned into a really bad place. I never not, I didn't stop believing in God, but I stopped praying. I wouldn't pray. I wouldn't, you know, seek him. I was like, what's the point? God, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I cried and I cried and I cried and I fasted and you did nothing. Yeah. You, you, you forgot about me, God. Uh, here I am. I've done all the things that I'm supposed to do and you just let this happen to me. And it was in that moment of immaturity and that moment of me not being, you know, centered in Christ that after that first marriage, I was like, man, just forget it. Like, I'm just going to do what I want to do now. Right. I'm not going to worry about trying to align, align with Christ. I'm not going to worry about what the word says. I'm not going to worry about what other people have to say. I'm just going to do it my way. And I knew that my way wasn't the best way. And, and we got to be very sensitive to that place because in that brokenness, if you're choosing love or a relationship in that broken state, I promise you, nine times out of ten, it will never, ever work. Because, and that's what you, like the healed version of someone can choose another healed person. And in our brokenness, if we choose out of our brokenness, then the only thing that's going to manifest is a, a broken relationship. You know, she said in the first service that her trauma caused her to stop trusting. There it was. And I yeah. thought, wow, how powerful that is. So sometimes when we go through things, if we don't have on a prescription lens of the word, yes. then we're going to respond from the pain and not necessarily from purpose. That's so good. I thought that was so good. That, that, was, that was powerful. That's good. And so I called you up one day and I said, I had this dream. I said, the guy you dating is about to propose to you. And you were like, how, like, it didn't even make sense to you because of how he wasn't showing up in your life at that moment. Uh, but shortly after that, three days later, he proposed. Then I called you back and I said, listen, because I had a vision. Ah, come on, somebody. Um, I had a vision of the trajectory of your marriage and how it would end. I called you up. And before I could get it out my mouth, I said, Sharice, I had a dream about your marriage. And what did you say? I said, Blazing, I don't want to hear it. So she called me Blazing because my, my clothing line that I did at the time was called Blazing Clothing Brand. So she said she didn't want to hear it. Why did you not want to hear it? I didn't want to hear it because I knew that there was an element of truth, and I, I didn't want to hear it. I was in that spiritual fight of knowing what I, need, what I knew and what I wanted to do. What and I so, knew and what I wanted to do. Oh, that's I, good. I 
what I knew and what I wanted to do. She wouldn't even let me tell her what it was that I had a dream about. But her spirit connected to my spirit, and she said, nope, I don't even want to hear it. Um, it was a time we worked on a lot of projects and stuff, convocation, and your team and, you know, me and your team, we went to Salada, and we were having lunch. We got in a little debate, got in a nice little old debate. Uh, what was that debate about, Sharice? We were talking, and, it's, and prayer came up. And I remember in the restaurant, I looked at him, and I was like, well, Blazing, I don't even believe in prayer. I don't, I don't pray anymore. And he was like, what? Girl, how you going to say that? <laughs> and I was like, because it doesn't matter. God is going to do what he wants to do anyway. Ooh, What's boy. the point of me praying? He didn't listen. He didn't hear me um, when I did pray. So, you know, I'm just not going to pray. And that was a conversation wrapped around saying, let's pray. Maybe the guy can change a marriage. How, how can we do that? So now here I am reintroducing trauma because here she did that before in the first marriage and it didn't work out. So here it is now I'm saying, now pray for this marriage. You're like, why? People have free will, which is true. People have free will. You can pray until you turn blue in the face and the person can still walk out on your life. But it's still our assignment to do what it is that we're supposed to do, and that's lifting up, you know, whatever the desires of our heart, we lift it up in prayer. And so that was so powerful for us to have that conversation. Um, you invited me to church on Easter of last year. And what was so amazing is that here I was trying to help her heal from relationship trauma, and unbeknownst to her, she was helping me heal from church, whew, from church hurt. And it was her inviting me here that makes me now a member at Word of True Church. And so when you think about God omniscience and making sure that you are aligned with the right friends, you got to be careful who you are friends with because they can be your destiny helper or somebody that can prevent you from ever reaching your destiny. And so I thank you for that. I thank you for giving me that Starbucks gift card because uh, Pastor Evan is a, is a thug in Starbucks. And, uh, <laughs> Devil level. How, how did it get on me? <laughs> <laughs> and so that's what brought me to Word of True Church. Uh, before that, um, I work and do a lot of video work with your brother. Um, and this is how dope God is. This is unorthodox love. Pastor Evan, what is your connection to Dr. Sam Nix? Well, Dr. Nix, before he was Dr. Nix, was Principal Nix. And uh, the, the high school that we spent most of our years at as a church, uh, he became the principal there, which helped us as a church because it helped us stay there and connect there. And, and so that's how I met Dr. Nix. How many years ago was that? Oh, my, at least 10 I, I just want to, I'm going to walk this out on how good God is. So 10 years ago, mm. did you meet her 10 years ago? No, I, I, I didn't meet her. I'll tell you when I met her, but no, I, I hadn't met her then. So 10 years ago, her brother was strategic in allowing the church to have a church home. Absolutely. And you know, this, it was his church. So uh, yeah. him and Ebony uh, have been here and their kids are here. And so that was 10 years ago and some change. So he writes a book. He writes a book. And um, he asked, well, actually, Pastor Lisa uh, was working with him on event planning and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Unpack that story. Well, uh, after my divorce, I, you know, I'm almost 60. So my thing was, I'm not going to get married again. I'm just going to let my, my work be my wife. <laughs> you know, I can buy all the Gucci I want. And the, <laughs> I ain't got to talk to nobody about my money. <laughs> and so I was 75% not going to get married, and 25%, maybe whatever the Lord wants. <laughs> because really, singleness can be a choice. Paul said, I wish you could be like me. So that was kind of my attitude. And uh, what's funny is that my pastor made sure I never said I was not going to get married. So anyway, uh, we're, Dr. Nix was, was having his uh, book signing event, and he had asked Pastor Lisa, uh, did she think I would let him use the foyer for the event? And so Pastor Lisa calls me ahead of time before he called me and said, hey, Pastor, uh, I'm doing Dr. Nixon's book signing event. And he asked me, did, you, did he think you would let him use the for you for his event? And I said, well, did you tell him no? <laughs> she was like, well, no. I said, well, you know the rule. The rule is if we let one 
member do something personally at the church, I have to let everybody do it. So you, you should have just told him no. She says, I know, I know, but I just wanted him to ask you himself. I said, well, I'll just let him know when he comes. <laughs> And so, uh, so then she asked me the question. She's like, well, would you pray about it? Honestly, I didn't want to pray about it. Why do I need to pray about my own rule? Why? Right. Right? And so she asked me, would I pray about it? And so I said, okay. And so I do want to say at this point, if you really want to see some unorthodox things to happen in your life from God, you're going to have to relax your preferences. See? and embrace God's principles. Teach, teach. Because I had to relax a lot of my preferences or principles, my personal principles, that had nothing to do with the Bible. Like, right. for instance, you know, if someone was married 20 some years, they came to me for some advice, I'd be like, look, you need to get that out of your system. You need to at least be single five to seven years. <laughs> yeah. Well, it ain't been five to seven years for me. <laughs> so I had to relax that. So anyway, uh, I prayed about it. And the Lord told me to do it. So I had to have a staff meeting. I sit down with my staff, and they remember this story. I said, hey, listen, you all, there's going to be an event here. I uh, prayed about it. God told me to do it. Principal Nix is having a book signing event. And so, uh, you know, this is the day it's going to happen, da, 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 da. I said, I don't know if members of the church are going to be there. I said, however, if any member of Word of Truth comes to you and say, well, why did Pastor Evan let him use the for you for his event? I said, don't even try to answer them. Send them straight to me. Because at that point, I was just going to tell them, hey, God told me to do that. So anyway, that's, that's how that, that, that started. And who did you meet? So I was shooting a video of the event. Uh, Sharice was the mistress of ceremonies for the event. And you were there. Uh, you prayed over the event and whatnot. But that was the first time you met Sharice. First time I met Sharice. As a matter of fact, looking back now, um, you know, sometimes people don't see things through the perspective of a pastor. And so what I realize now that I didn't realize then is uh, even though being married didn't and does not define me, being married as a pastor, though, was designed for me. Right. God never called me to pastor without, you know, being single. So uh, that day I was on the program to pray. And uh, Dr. Nix asked Sharice at the last minute to be the moderator for the event. So I had never met her before, and so there was a little stage that Pastor Lisa had designed, and so we happened to sit next to each other. And so when we sat next to each other and I started talking with her, I, 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 I felt, I, that's the best word I can use because I'm not a feeler, but I felt <laughs> there was a connection. She's more of a feeler than me, that's why she helps me. So anyway, I felt a connection, and I knew it was real. I had never had a connection like that in my life. I'm like, what is this? Because I'm 75% no, 25% a little Jesus. And so we started talking and stuff, and, and what was interesting is it felt like I had knew this lady for like 30 years, and so we're, we're talking, and I noticed that she starts fanning while we're talking. <laughs> and then she was like, are you the pastor of this church? Uh, you need the air conditioner to work in this church. I'm like, the air conditioner works in this church. The question is, why are you hot right now? <laughs> if we had a Martin Luther King fan, she'd have been fan. So we just started, you know, bantering back and forth, back and forth. So anyway, that night I knew, I was like, ooh, it sucks about that lady. But I still left 75, 25. It didn't change, not 1%. Not at all. It's not at all. So what? So something happened at the event that really created a beginning of connection. Right. Uh, Dr. Nix was giving out door prizes. At the end, the big door prize was an iPad. And so I had a ticket. I wanted to win it too. So anyway, <laughs> he, he's, he's doing it. And so her, her daughter, she has two. Maddie is 11 now. And so Maddie got a ticket. And I watched her. She was really excited about getting the ticket. And as they were reading the numbers, she was, and Maddie wins the iPad. And she's excited. And then Dr. Nix says, Oh, that's my niece. I'll buy her one. Let's do another drawing. I'm, and Maddie's face was like, oh, my God. And, and you know, I'm, I'm like Jesus. I love the children. <laughs> so I was like, oh, my God. I saw her face go from joy to sorrow. So I went to Dr. Nix and to Sharice. I was like, look, I'm going to buy her an iPad. Because he did a drawing and somebody else wanted it. They took it home. 
So I, I had to, Pastor Lisa to buy one. I, she gave it to Dr. Niz. Dr. Niz gave it to her. She gave it to me. So she inboxed me on, on Instagram just to tell me thank you for the iPad. And of course, and, and even then I wanted to say something. But I was 75, 25. I can't say nothing. <laughs> So I said, you know, I did a typical pastor response. Thank you so much. It's a joy being, you know, generous. <laughs> God bless you and the girls. No, literally, I said that. <laughs> I said that. So uh, that's how that took place. And so she invited me, she invited me to church on Easter, and uh, one of your members came up to me and said, you know what, uh, I watch your podcast and this, this, this. She said, you should, you should join Word of Truth. You know, you single, the pastor single. And I was like, that's not a selling point for me to, <laughs> to come to your church. Like, why would, I wanna, why would I wanna come to your church and your pastor single, you know? <laughs> and, so, and so her brother, uh, Dr. Nix, introduced me to you. And, um, and I was like, this would be really dope to have a pastor who's single come on the podcast. I saw the value in that, to, to hear how you navigate being single. Um, and so you and I talked and um, I end up calling Sharice after that and said, I think the pastor like you. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, I, did, I made sure I did not show any interest while he introduced him to me. You know, we, yeah. I, I, I didn't have no special looks or nothing. I was like, no, I'm not doing it. And, and that's how I knew he liked her because he was trying so hard not to. <laughs> Sharice is beautiful. He trying too hard not to look at her. So I'm like, ah. I peeped that. <laughs> he peeped it. <laughs> <laughs> so I called and told her that. And so I invited him on the podcast. And uh, at that time, I had like 90,000 subscribers. And um, he, he hadn't heard about it. He started talking to some of the church members about it. And they were like, you need to do it. You need to do it. And um, he's, he, what, what questions did you ask me about my demographics? Look, at the time, I, I did not need a podcast to be hit on from women. I don't need a podcast. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm saying that humbly, too. All right? <laughs> so, so anyway, I said, so how many, what's, how many, you know, subscribers he told me that? I said, what percent of your audience is women? 87%. And I was like, oh, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> so I actually turned him down the yep. first time. I was, I was like, no, because I'm not trying to be out there like that. I wasn't, look, I wasn't no, no, no dating service, and I wasn't doing none of that stuff. I'm 75, 25, y'all hear me? And so I talked to Pastor Lisa, I talked to Pastor Polo, and they was like, Pastor, you need to get on the show. You, you're looking at what might could happen instead yeah. of looking at the impact you can have on people's life. Yeah. So I, I went ahead and did it, and so that's how that whole thing started there. And so on the podcast, what, what spoke to me is how you, um, even, you know, behind the scenes, I asked you, I was like, why did you get a divorce? And um, your response was so powerful because you didn't try to shame her. You didn't try to be negative towards her. You just spoke highly of her. Why did you do that? Well, at the end of the day, and I'm just going to say this generally, uh, this is really not about exes. Right. Because, and, and shaming anybody. But at the end of the day, when people change, their choices change. And you have to respect whatever choice and change they have made, but you can't make them do anything. Right. And so I'm not gonna, yes. I'm not gonna speak ill, number one, because it's still my children's mom. Right. Okay, and then two, the majority, because see, some people end up divorced. And here's, here's, here's something that I wanna throw at you that I didn't say in the first service. Uh, I married right the first time. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. so here it is. You can marry right the first time and it's still not work out. Teach. Okay, teach. so, so you, you know, don't get in your mind that I'm going to marry the right man or the right woman and it's going to always be right. Well, I hope it will. Yeah. But it might not always work like that. So right. at the end of the day, I knew that it's still my children's wife. The majority of my life married was good. So I'm not going to trash my ex because if you're trashing your ex, that means you have trash in your heart. Teach. And God can't put a blessing on top of trash. Teach. He can't put a blessing on top of trash. So one thing that I did do as I was walking through divorce, one of the things that I purposed was I am not going to have a heart full of bitterness, a heart full of pain. I'm not saying I didn't go through pain. I'm saying I did not let that incubate in my heart because I knew that my heart, out of the, the Bible says, out of the heart flows the issues of life. So if life was coming out of my heart and my heart turned bad, 
Yeah. Then my life would turn bad. And then it's wrong to let a bad situation create a bad life. Yes. So You know what? I, I do need to make this point because when I was trying to warn Cherise from marrying the second husband, it's because I could see in him the brokenness that I used to have in my past marriage. Wow. And so it was the warning before destruction because I said, the way you're talking about him, what I'm hearing, what I'm seeing is who I used to be. And who I used to be as this broken, shattered boy could not function as a husband in a marriage. And, you know, this is something that was said in the first service, uh, but that, that Sharice brought up, that her parents saw her choice and they decided to not even go to her wedding. Right. That's tough right there in itself. So not only do you have life challenges, now it's like, oh, wow, I don't feel I have the support. But at the end of the day, you know, it, we have to keep, we're, we're the only ones responsible for our heart. Nobody else is. Right. You know, so right. anyway, so I'm going to introduce to the single people the eyes that I walked through when I was started this whole process. And the eyes, the first one is uh, interested. So when I met her, I was interested. I was like, hmm. I feel something. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, hmm. And I'm not just saying on outside beauty, because you, you, can't, you can't deny she doesn't look beautiful on. She does look beautiful on the outside. So, but, but, you know, it's beyond that. So, so I was interested. And then I went from being interested, here's the second eye, is to investigate. And I'm going to show each one of them. Because, you know, you just can't be interested and not investigate. Because, <laughs> see, that's why you ended up dating a man that was married, because you didn't do enough investigation. Oh, teach. 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 Then after you invest, uh, investigate, then you have to inquire of God. And then number four, you need to get involved. And then the last one is you need to get invested. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So when I was interested and I felt that connection that day, I was like, mm, I need to find out some stuff. So, you know, I went to social media. <laughs> Best place to go. It's free. It's free. <laughs> I need to check out this lady. I need to see what she posted, what she believed, what her perspectives are, what her, I just, you know, and I had to ask her to follow her because it was private at the time. So I'm like, well, she going to know I'm following her now, <laughs> but I'm still going, you know, I'm interested. So I, I had to do the things that interest her. So I started following her. And then I did something different. Uh, this is unorthodox. But uh, at the time, Principal Nix was looking at uh, a superintendent role somewhere, so I was advising him on that. And so he was over at the house, and so uh, after we got talking through with business, I said, well, Dr. Nix, I said, uh, I got a question. I was like, uh, would you mind if I became friends with your sister? <laughs> I mean, I didn't want the member to be like, why is the pastor pushing up on my sister? <laughs> so, you know, I asked him for permission for, his, for me to become friends and he told me yes and I said well what would you do if you was me he says well I would get to know her and enjoy the process and so I said I will treat her just like I would want someone to treat my sister good now she didn't know I had to ask him because she don't know what's happening all the way but I did say to her finally had he told me no I would not have pursued her that's good so uh so as I got interested then I decided okay I need to investigate so one of the things that I did to investigate is I asked her to go out to dinner with her best friend because I wanted to interview her best friend about her. Why was that important? Because your friends know you. <laughs> well, 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 how did you, so you believe that her friend would tell you the truth about her? Well. And so when he told me that he wanted to meet my friend Tina, um, he said, in his investigative role, you know, he was like, I got questions, I'm gonna ask her. He's like, do you, <laughs> I got all these questions. He was like, I was like, okay. And so he was like, do you want to know the questions? Well, at this part of my life, I had ended that marriage and the year, um, a year before we divorced, I knew that my life was in a spiral and I knew that that's not who I was and that's not what I wanted to be. And so I spent a year really turning my life back to Christ. Mm -hmm. I started reading the Bible, I started focusing on the word, I started praying, I started getting back connected to Christ and just centering myself and focusing on him. I was getting my heart and my mind ready. And so with that, when he wanted to meet Tina 
And he was like, do you want to know all these questions? I was 75, 25, too, by the way. <laughs> so, hello. Oh, hello. I wasn't looking for nobody. For real, because, compatible at this yeah, point. Yeah. I, wasn't, I wasn't looking for anybody. I was worried about right. getting Sharice healed. Right. I was working on me, working yeah. on healing myself. Yeah. And so um, when, when he said he wanted to meet Tina, you know, I told her, I told him and I told her, I said, friend, I said, I need you to be completely transparent and honest about who I am. Don't try to sugarcoat me. Don't try to make me seem like I'm somebody that I'm not. Because if he's interested in me, he's got to know who I am, flaws and all. Teach. He's got to know Teach. my background, my, my, my challenges, my weaknesses. Yes. He's got to be able to deal with the fact that I've been married twice, that I have kids, that I've done X, Y, and Z. I said, so don't go there trying to to make me seem someone that I'm not. That's Be good. completely authentic with who I am to him. That's good. Yep, so she just told her friend, tell him. <laughs> so I asked Tina to go to dinner and I asked her husband, could I do that? And so I went to dinner. Uh, Which is very unorthodox. How do you ask a married woman, can I go out to dinner with you and ask your husband for permission? So that's unorthodox too. Yeah, and uh, because they are very good friends with her, uh, they had no problems with doing that. Yeah. So I, I'm going to just give you five of the questions that I asked her best friend about her, okay? How many want to know the question? I, you know, okay. we all know it. We How many know don't it? care and you ready to go home? Yeah. <laughs> so the first question I asked was, what would you consider Sharice's weaknesses to be in a relationship? That's a good question. Because I knew she had been married twice. I mean, I, I've been married once, but I mean, it's, it's, it wasn't twice. hers still beat mine, so <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to know. Shade. What? <laughs> Shade. That's all right. <laughs> so that was the first question. The second question was, what was Sharice's biggest personal weaknesses as a person? That's good. My third question was, what makes Sharice a good friend to you? My fourth question was, what would make Sharice a good wife? Mm. Because at this point, I, I wasn't looking for a ministry partner. I'm looking for a wife. What's the difference? Well, the difference is, first of all, I'm a man first, and then I'm a man of God, and then I'm a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was that a bad response? <laughs> No, 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 you are a regular man, then you get saved, man of God, then I became a pastor. That's facts. So, you know, and then at the end of the day, a help meet is designed to help you, whether yes. it help me as a husband, help me as a spouse, help me as a pastor, or yeah. whatever the case is. So, anyway, so that's why I asked her that. And then the fifth question was, what is the difference about me compared to the men that she had previously had? Good. I wanted to know, hey, what's different about me than these other two? What did she say about that? Tina said, you are a believer, you are a man of God, you are a Christ follower. That's good. And that was, a, and that was her thing. Her thing was, look, I don't care what they look like because, I, I, you know, we, we talked about each other's DMs and stuff. Yeah. She got DMs from men, you know. Uh, <laughs> got yeah. all this money and yeah. tell her. Name the place, the state of the country, and then fly her there and do this and do that. And, you know, so, you know, she ain't hurting. <laughs> so anyway, so, so that's what I did in the investigating process. That's good. So the next step was, okay, uh, I need to talk to the Lord about this. Because as I did enough investigation, I realized I think this is my wife. Right. Was it love at first sight? No, it was connection at first sight. Yeah. But it wasn't love at first sight because you can't love somebody until you, you know them. There it is. So anyway, I prayed two prayers. And the first prayer was, God, I need you to talk to Lisa Fuller about this lady. Now, for those of you who don't know, Lisa Fuller is my assistant, and she also does the money. When you work for a church, you're going to have more than one job. So she does two roles. And so Lisa Fuller, had, Pastor Lisa, has been knowing me for at least 25 years. And so I told, I told the Lord, I said, I need you to talk to Lisa Fuller about Sharice because she met uh, Sharice at the book signing. And then I said, Lord, I need you to talk to somebody I don't know, she doesn't know, don't know me about the whole thing. I told nobody this prayer, including my best friend. I normally tell my best friend everything. Pastor James McGavish shouts out to you. I love you. 
but, but I didn't tell him. So some time went by, and we finished the staff meeting. I'll never forget, Pastor Lisa calls me in her office. And she says, Pastor, can you have a seat for a minute? And I'm thinking she's going to talk about money because that's what she does. And she says, uh, Pastor, I ain't trying to fix you up. I ain't trying to get in your personal life. She says, but I believe I found the right lady for you. And I was like, really? And, you know, I had to play like, I, I don't know nothing. I was just like keeping a straight face like, really? <laughs> <laughs> and she said, yeah. I said, well, who is it? She says, Dr. Nix's sister. I was like, really? <laughs> I still had to play my cards. I was like, so why? <laughs> so she started listing all these reasons why she felt that. And then after she told me everything, I said, Pastor Lisa, I, I asked God to talk to you about this lady. That's good. That's now, why good. Pastor Lisa? Because not only has she known me for all these years, Pastor Lisa is a woman of God. There it is. And I knew she could hear from God. And so that was the first thing that I did. And that's why I was saying you got to be careful about who your friends are. I'm telling you because if God wants to speak to you and he wants to give you, I want you to talk about the difference between signs and confirmations. Well, me asking God so to some people would seem like a sign, but they're different, okay? Because the Bible says that God will confirm his word with signs following. Yes. So really what he's confirming is the word. So my prayer lined up with his word. What there do you mean? Is. It says, in all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So the moment I asked God about this, he had to confirm his word and those confirmations would come with some signs, which I'll explain. And a lot of us, we look at it different. See, a confirmation is really what God wants you to know, but a sign is really what you want to know. Teach. Give us an example of that. Well, the example is what we're doing right now. So I asked God to, two things. The first one was Pastor Lisa. The second one was somebody who didn't know nothing about this. That's good. So I get an inbox on Facebook from somebody. I don't know them. They don't know me. And so what I decided to do to show you all about the journey, I'm going to read you this inbox from this person, and I'm going to give shout-outs to her. I don't know if she's watching or not. Her name is Nikita Coleman. So this is what she sent me on an inbox right after Pastor Lisa confirmed uh, Sharice. Hi, Pastor Connor. This is not a scam. I didn't know how else to reach you but through social media. I don't really know you, only visited your church once, but I love the Lord and have been a Christian for a long time. I'm reaching out because on this morning, I had a dream about you that I believed had a meaning. Without going into every single detail, the point of the dream was that you were choosing to remarry. Let's just stop right there. Because this lady doesn't know me. And at this point where I started, you know, uh, this investigative piece, I realized I pray to prayer, God, whatever you want for me and whatever is best for my church is what I want. If you want me married, I'll do that. If you don't want me married, I won't do that. And I realized that God wanted me married. And one of the things that he helped me come to that conclusion were all the issues or, uh, let me just say this, opportunities for women. Yeah, yeah. Because, see, I started getting stalked. I started getting numbers from burning phone. Burn phone. How many know what a, 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 a burner phone is? A burner phone is. <laughs> burner, yeah, I started getting calls from burner phones. And what they would do, they would be smart. They would let it, you know, because I'm not going to answer the phone if I don't know the number. And they would let it go in the voicemail to know that it's my phone. So then they started texting me. So in it, then they, they know where I work. Hello. <laughs> so I get calls from people on staff. Pastor so-and-so look like they up here. Don't come. And then the line to greet was always out of this world. <laughs> so that started bothering me. Yeah. And I realized I'm going to need to get married. So now my 75, 25 is changing a little bit. So anyway. So that was interesting because that was one of the things that made you, gave you angst about coming on the Dear Future Wifey podcast, and, uh, which also showed a lot about your character because you was like, I don't want all that attention from women. I, don't, I, just, I just don't want that. Well, it would be very difficult to be up here doing a podcast like this if people in your audience and in your church and on the internet got your draws. Oh, I'm sorry. That was too raw. Let me just say, if you don't slept with him. See, Joseph, they got Joseph. She got Joseph's clothing. Y'all ain't got mine. So, anyway, uh, I just, that was free. 
<laughs> so this is what this person said. Uh, I don't know where I left off. Here we go. Uh, you had cho chosen to remarry. Uh, let me let me go back here. All right, all right, all right, all right. Here we go. Uh, I'm reaching out because of this morning I had a dream that I believe had meaning without going into detail. The point of the dream is that you were choosing to remarry. You introduced her to your congregation. Most were happy for you. Some puzzled. Now, remember last week when I was doing my sermon, I told y'all to remember the word puzzled. How many remember that? Raise your hand if you remember. Okay, here's where puzzle comes in. Many were happy, but some were puzzled, concerned because she was younger than you. But she was genuinely sent to help you, a help suitable for you. So as I investigated, I realized I am older than she is. It's at least a decade and some change. <laughs> but I just believe God just knew I had some youth in me. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Stay spiritual, okay? So this is what she goes on to say. Um, most were happy, some were puzzled, concerned she was, genuinely she was sent to help you, a help suitable for you. Then the dream switched scenes and you were in your church office with your head down, discouraged because you lashed out at someone. I didn't see the lashing, I just knew that it happened. That's Elder Eben. I went off on somebody, I just chewed somebody out real bad, you know. <laughs> and he says, you know, you didn't want to preach because the lashing was pretty intense. But this woman, she says here, the woman who God had sent and chosen uh, came in your office, put her hand on your back, and began to pray for you. You were encouraged and ready to preach. I don't know uh, what this means or if it'll mean anything to you, but I wanted to tell you I've been a dreamer and a seer most of my life. But I don't always share. Most of the times I just pray for people that I see and other times I do pray and share. I felt to share this with you. I hope that it's not offensive. I respect your office and in no way do I have any other intentions but to share this dream in hopes that it encourages you. People are definitely praying for you that you know not of. May God continue to bless you, your ministry, and your family. If this dream means absolutely nothing, I apologize in advance. I never want to offend anyone. Can we give Nikita a big hand clap? So, signs and confirmations. So, God did what I asked him to do. But right. because this is such a big decision, not only for her life, but for my life as well. I'll never forget, when I was going through my divorce, my mom would have dreams about stuff. And she wouldn't tell me until like two weeks later. So, the first time it happened, see, she's she over there. Uh, for, for first time it happened, I'm at her house, she's telling me about a dream, and because she waited two weeks to tell me the dream, it had already happened. Now, I didn't tell her that it was a prophetic dream, but I was like, huh, I mean, I've been knowing this lady for 57 years, I didn't know she was a prophetic dreamer, so I left it alone. She had another dream, she told me about it, it had happened, because she waited to tell me. And then she had this third dream, it was real specific, and I said only one person outside of me knew about this. And because she waited to tell me, it had already happened, and I thought the person who knew was talking to my mama. So I went to him, I was like, hey, are you talking to my mama? <laughs> they was like, well, no. And I realized that my mama was prophetically dreaming. So about a year and some change ago, my mama had a dream. So I came to the house, she said, heaven, sit down. Y'all know who she is, Mother Connor, sit down. And so she starts telling me about this dream. Now this is before I met Cherise, this is before, I'm still 75, 25 when she's telling me this stuff. And my mama tells me about a dream, and in this dream, I had this little girl, and she describes this little girl to the teeth. Light-skinned, pretty little girl, but you just loved her. And, and I'm getting mad while my mama talking. <laughs> because first of all, <laughs> I have a vasectomy, I can't have no more kids. <laughs> Second of all, I will not be reversing this vasectomy, so I ain't having no more kids. Third of all, I didn't want no, I'm not even getting married, you talking about kids? So I just, look, I let my mama talk and I was steaming like broccoli. I'm sorry, mama. I was, wasn't not mad, mama, I was mad. I was not happy with my mama. And so finally at the end, I let her talk, I said, mama, I don't know what that means. And I just left it there, right? There's another sign. Because when I finally 
share with my mom about Sharice after doing whatever I was doing, investigating all that. She asked me, she was like, so does she have any kids? I said, she has two. She says, do you have a picture? So I showed my mom the pictures, and the picture of her four-year-old is the little girl that was in my mother's dream. Come on, you can't look. See, God yeah. loves you too much for you to make a mistake. See, the reason why he can't confirm his word with us because we don't want his word. Pastor Evan, yes. there's another moment. There's another moment of confirmation that we never talked about. What did Maddie see one time on the house? Oh, my gosh. Remember that? Why don't you share that if you want to? The house. So my 11-year-old, she, um, she started saying, Mom, uh, you're lonely. We need to get you a man. <laughs> I was like, girl, I'm not lonely. Uh, I was like, I don't need a man. I, you know, I was like, I don't, I'm okay. She's like, no, let's get you on a dating site. We can fix you up. You just curl your hair. I'll take a picture outside and we'll, I'll, I'll get all the things. And I was like, oh, okay, Maddie. So I was like, well, Maddie, what kind of man do you think that I should be looking for? Oh, mommy, one that's just going to treat you right, one that's going to be respectful, one that's not going to disrespect you, and that's going to love you and love us. And I said, okay. And so she was like, and I just, I just can picture, I can just picture the house. And I said, the house? I said, well, what do you mean? She said, I could just see it. It's going to be really modern. It's going to be white brick. It's going to have a fountain outside. It's going to have a black roof. She is describing the house, house. to a T. That is his house. Exactly. She, to the tea? Des she right. described his house to the T. The first time I took her by the house without even letting her know that was his house, she said, Mommy, this is the house that I saw. So my 11 year old told me that. Wow. 11. You know, when you just think about how awesome God is, it, it blows my mind because even when you did the podcast, I told you, uh, I said, You'll be married in uh, two years. He was like, absolutely not. Yep, 75, 25. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why I said that is because I said that it's just not good for a, a pastor to be single and for him to be left uncovered. And I knew that God has so much in store for you just by the way you move because you wasn't moving like you wanted a bunch of women. So it's like, well, the only other option is to be with one woman and then you don't want to just be in a situation ship for a lifetime. So get married and go ahead and do this thing again. And, and when I said that, you were just like, that's... Well, my best friend told me to, and then let me say this, the first person to say something to me was Prophet Marcus Beaver. He came here, he ministered, he asked the person who he came with, hey, can I connect with this pastor? I see God doing something big in his life, in his church, and I really need to prophetically pray him through some things. And so I gave him my number, no big deal. And so I remember the first or second time he's talking to me, he starts talking, he's like, man of God, I don't know you, but uh, I, I see you getting married again. And, and I'm 75, 25. <laughs> so I'm like, look, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not ready for that. He's like, I know, I know. And so he kept at it. So then he, he, every time he talked to me, that's all he would talk about. He was like, listen, I'm telling man of God, it's going to be like a fairy tale. You're going to, uh, it's going to be a forever honeymoon. You're going to love this lady so much, you're going to be ready to leave church. And I'm like, man, this sounds too good to be true, man. <laughs> so one day, he, I got so upset with Prophet Marcus. He telling me, is it going to be a forever I'm, It's going to be a forever honeymoon. I'm telling you, you're going to leave church. You're going to love that. I said, listen. <laughs> I said, let me tell you something. That sounds too good to be true. I said, I'll tell you what. If that happens to me, I ain't going to tell you how much it was. I said, I'll sow this much money into your ministry. He was like, don't do that, pastor. You don't know me. I said, no, no. <laughs> you don't know me. I'm accurate. I'm accurate. I was like, I, I don't care. <laughs> if it happens the way you talking. <laughs> Well, I done already gave him the money. <laughs> I already gave him the money. And he had a dream. Listen, he had a dream, because you got to know prophet. He don't even sleep. He just pray all the time. He, he had a dream or a vision, and he saw this lady in the vision. And when I finally met her and I told him about it, he said, send me the picture. I sent him the picture. He said, that's the lady, pastor. So, listen, as a regular person, I'm not saying that I don't want this to seem so highfalutin that you don't yeah. see how it can work in your life. Here's my point to you. Do not be afraid 
to open your heart up to God, to be so honest with him so he can be honest with you. That's good. That's good. And if That's somebody's good. in your life right now that is not supposed to be in your life, what you got to do, you can't see it as a loss. What you have to see, it, you have to see it as a gain because if they're not supposed to be in your life, the blessings of the Lord make you rich and add, add no, no sorrow. sorrow. That means if it ain't a blessing from the Lord, it's going to eventually cause some sorrow in your life. Teach, teach. It was interesting. What I always love about you is your submission to your pastoral uh, leadership. And so you, you're a pastor with a pastor, and so you had to take Sharice to meet your pastor. But when you <laughs> went on the trip to go see her, it was met with a little hiccup in that because y'all, at this time, y'all was keeping y'all's uh, courtship a little private. What happened at the airport? Well, let me, let me add this. Um, as, as a pastor, you live in a fishbowl, so you're a public figure. So everything you see or, or everything people see, that's what they see. So I knew I had to involve my pastor. And let me just say this as a side note. As a pastor going through divorce, I did everything my pastor, everything that I would want a member to do, go through counsel, whatever, I did everything I needed to do with my pastor. So here it is now. I've done all the investigation. I realized this is God, so I needed to... to have a meeting with them. So I fly down, I have a personal meeting with my pastors, and they already knew why I was coming. They already knew that I was coming to talk to them about getting married, and they were with me 100%. Yes. Yeah. So then we have to go down as a couple. So this is the first time we're out, right? We wasn't dating and out. This is the first time we out in public, so we, we at the airport, right? And, uh, you know, we just, we just going through the airport, and all of a sudden, um, I get an email, I mean, a text message from a member. I'm going to read you the text message <laughs> from the member. Now, listen, this member lives in California. She used to live here in Texas. They relocated to California. She's still a member. And so I get a text message from her while I'm in the airport. This is what it says. Say it in her voice, too. Huh? Say oh, I'm going to say it in her voice. Okay, I got to find it again. Let me find it again. All right, let me find it. This is, uh, uh, this is Cheryl. Cheryl is in California, which, by the way, she texts me in between services and said, uh, 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 Pastor, you did good. So, <laughs> this is the text message. Hey, Pastor Evan. One of my friends spotted you in the airport today. All I'm going to say is, go, Pastor Evan. <laughs> <laughs> if it's what it looks like, I couldn't be happier for you. My friend thought you were a reality star and sent me a picture. I was like, that's my pastor. Go say hello. She was scared to say anything. I didn't even know I had paparazzi. <laughs> So now I'm like, oh, my God, it is out. People are going to know. I don't want them to know until I'm ready for them to know. Right. So here's my response to Cheryl. Three laughing emojis. Okay, Cheryl, keep it a secret. We're on our way to have dinner with my pastor and his wife. Can you show me the pictures? Because the lady snapped pictures of us. <laughs> right? She didn't know it was, I, was, I was her pastor. So anyway... Uh, I can't tell you all the other stuff Cheryl said. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. It is rated PG, X and R. But anyway, I just thought it was funny that here it is, our first day out. What did your, what, what, so what did your pastor say? You know what? Well, first of all, he knew why I was coming. Second of all, as I shared the things that I knew about it, uh, this is so funny. My pastor's wife, her best friend, her wife's, his wife's best friend uh, is a very famous person. I'm not going to say the name. But this famous person called her and said, hey, what are y'all doing this evening? She says, oh, uh, Apostle and I are having dinner with Pastor Evan. And the person said to her, you think Pastor Evan will get married again? And she said, oh, yeah, he's going to get married again. And this is before they knew what I was going to share with them. But they, they pretty much said, son, you've been faithful to God. He's rewarding you. And, and follow your heart in what you're doing. That's good. That's good. That's good. And so uh, you proposed to her last week. Uh, you and I had discussed a different type of proposal. What was that? What was the original proposal 
uh, how was the original proposal supposed to go down versus how it went down? Well, actually, I had planned on proposing today. And what we were going to do, I was going to propose in the first service, and then y'all just watched the video of the whole show. Yeah. And uh, Saturday, uh, uh, we had, we going through premarital. So I got up, and I was praying before our premarital service, and the Lord spoke to me and told me to propose to her in the counseling session, in front of the counselors. That's odd. She don't know. I didn't know. The counselors sure don't know. So the first part of the counseling session, what was interesting is the lady counselor that they're married, it's a, it's a couple, started crying in the session. Uh, what was interesting also is they said them meeting with us was refreshing because they hadn't seen something like this in a while. So we got to a part of the session where I was like, this is the perfect time right here. So I just did, just like I just jumped down on my knee right here. You know, and I had the ring in my pocket. And uh, basically, I proposed to her. I wrote out what I wanted to say. Uh, and I wrote it because I wanted to make sure I said some things. And I didn't know if she was going to be focused when I said it to her. And so uh, now, you know, of course, I sent it to her. But that's, that's what happened. I, I proposed to her in a counseling session. And the, they put out the camera and made sure they captured the moment. But I'm thankful that my church was in the world, but pr primarily my church, was able to see me walk through the valley yeah. and now can see me on the mountain. There it is. That's good. I promise you it'll work out for your good. I know it's hurting. I know it's challenging. I know it's painful. But I promise you if you'll keep your eyes on the prize and if you follow God and if you don't compromise, I'm not listen, I'll say this. I had to relax my preferences. Teach. Because watch this. I didn't think I'd want more kids. But I love London. You got to know London. London is for you. London special. <laughs> London ain't gonna. London ain't gonna be nice to everybody. Uh, uh. She's sometimes too. But you know what? When I go over, guess who's meeting me at the door? London. Why? Right? I'm just saying. God's. You have to. Re Some of y'all. I'm talking to somebody prophetically now. You ain't dating outside your race. Ah. Well, you know what? Stay lonely. <laughs> God's bigger than a race. The blood is red. Sharice, how did you feel when he proposed to you in, in marriage counseling? I was completely shocked. I thought that he would have done it today also. So um, when he got on his knee, I was, and he's pulled out his phone and started reading something. I was like, is he reading a poem? Is he, <laughs> like, I was, I was just shocked. And so, but I was so grateful in that moment. Um, because what we didn't mention in the first service is the counselors that we chose to go to are the same counselors that I went to with my ex-husband. That's powerful. So for them to see what the issues were, to see what it is now, she was overcome with so much gratitude and gratefulness to say, wow, look what God did. And that's the moment that took her. And so in that moment, I just, I just felt just um, like, who, who, am, who am I? Like, why me? You know, I'm no different than any other woman that's sitting in the audience. You know, I've been through challenges. I've been divorced. I've gone through depression. I've gone through, you know, suicidal thoughts. I've gone through um, turning away from Christ. And, and that, that year where I decided to focus and get my relationship back with Christ, um, reading through the Bible, uh, my friend and I, we decided to be accountable and, and, to, and to read the word every day and to talk about it and have um, um, Bible study. And so every time I was reading the Bible, um, I would remember reading about Sarah and remembering about Rebecca and remembering about Leah. And the Bible specifically says that God remembered her. Mm. And that spoke to me so deeply. God had me pause. Every time it was written in scripture, it was like it, it was a charge for me. And he, and he spoke to me and he said, Sharice, I haven't forgotten you. Teach. 
Sharice, I will remember you. Teach. I didn't even know him. I hadn't even met him. And that year, I even was so strongly convicted. I was so convicted. You couldn't tell me otherwise. I even went to my mom and dad's house one day, and I was with tears in my eyes in their kitchen. And I said, y'all, I don't know what God is getting ready to do for me, but I feel like something is coming. I feel like God is preparing me for something. I feel like God is turning the situation around. And I, and you could, I was that convicted because I had turned my heart and my head to Christ. Yes. And I just want to encourage those of you out there, those of you that feel like God has let you down, if you feel like God has left you, if you feel like God hasn't heard your cries, if you feel like you're, you are like me crying in, the, in your closet and praying and God doesn't hear you, I'm here to let you know that God has not forgotten about you. There it is. God has not forgotten about you, church. Because I'm no different than anyone else. And if he did it for me, he can do it for you. I love it. I love it. I love it. One of my favorite questions that I always ask couples is this. Pastor Evan, when you look at Sharice, what is it when you, and the things that you pray for, the things, the confirmations that have come, um, why do you love Sharice? Well, of course, it's, it's not hard to love someone who's so beautiful. Let's just start in the flesh first. Uh, that's not hard. But she's just as beautiful on the inside as she is on the outside. Yeah. Sweetest person. I'm tech, I'm a, Look, I will constantly visit to dentist when we get married because she's going to give me cavities. She's so sweet. I mean, she's a, she's a sweet lady. No, for real, though. For real. If you can't get along with Sharice, uh, you know. But uh, anyway, no but, but I know... She's a blessing from the Lord. I know. And, and this is not shade at all, but I, when you, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And just like I knew the first time that I was marrying right, I know the second time that I'm marrying just as right. There it is. So she's, she's the right person for me and for my life. Sharice, what do you love about my homie, Pastor Evan? I love the fact that he's truly centered in Christ Church. You know, you often, not often, but there are times where there are, there are preachers and pastors who get up on the stage and they say one thing and then they live a whole different lifestyle behind the, the, behind the scenes. Yeah. That is not who our pastor is. He is a man, yeah. He's a man of integrity. He's a man of character. He's a man that is a pra that prays. He's a man that believes. He covers me. He prays for me. He supports me. He uplifts me. He's every day. He calls. Babe, is there anything I can do for you today? Like what? Like I? What is that? You know, I, every single day he is consistent in who he is, and I appreciate you, honey. I love you. He's just a blessing to me. The girls are family, Thank you, baby. and I just absolutely adore him. <laughs> oh, can't wait for the promised land. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and so that's what I love so much about y'all. And here I was having this new friend, Pastor Evan, that I was getting to know, Sharice knowing her story, and I saw for a fact that y'all were so perfect for each other. And so when, you know, y'all would call me and we would talk, and I'd be like, Sharice, I was like, I think Pastor Evan like you. Do you like him? <laughs> She's like, why is that? I said, I know you, you know, I don't know where you at. I don't want to be in the, be in the first lady. She said, I don't really like all that. I don't really like all that attention. I don't really like all that stuff. I'll just probably be a first lady and just sit in the back somewhere. And I was like, no, God is calling you from the back to the front. God is, God is, God is exalting you. God is elevating you. All the stuff that you did in private, God is going to uh, reward you publicly. And, um, and then I talked to old Pastor Evan, and I was like, you know she fine, right? You know, so... So what's up? Because I knew what he liked. I, you know, we got the talking. And so, you know, just to know that God is in his omniscience, that means all-knowing. And God in his omniscience knows how to, because the stuff that I used to tell her that she deserved as a husband, I'm talking about for years, for seven years, what I told her what she deserved as a husband was manifested in you, Pastor Evan. And, wow. and I want to say to that, Latarius, I appreciate our friendship. And he has seen me. 
in my highs and my lows. And he has been there with me and for me. And he called me one day and he just went off on me. And he was like, girl, do you not know who you are? You need to know your worth. You need to know your value. You, why are you in these toxic situations and yeah. relationships? Why do you let people treat you this way? And I just appreciate, like he said, surrounding yourselves with people that will be honest with you and hold you accountable and lift you up and pray for you and tell you the truth even when you don't want to hear it. Right. Like I said, I thank God for what he did, and uh, I'm honored to one day call you my first lady. <laughs> to call you my first lady. Um, Y'all have a date? When y'all get married? Uh, sooner than later. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the date? It's that's sooner the than date. Later. Sooner or later. Sooner or yeah. later. Sooner or later. Listen, I thank y'all so much for being transparent, for keeping it lit. Did y'all get a lot of value out of this episode? <laughs> Listen, I thank y'all so much. Y'all are the epitome of unorthodox love. Uh, to sum up, why would you say this love is unorthodox? Because unorthodox means different. And uh, there's a lot of things that was different about what has happened. Uh, from how we met, the way we met, uh, things I had to do that I normally wouldn't have done, and just to watch God do some unorthodox things. And I will say this again to our church and those who are connected. God is trying to do something unorthodox in your life, and he cannot put new wine in an old, old wine. wine skin. Yes. And I just want to, I want this to be the thing that you can see that goes, okay, I'm open to what God wants to do. Because if not, he can't put new wine in the old mind, which means now my old life is what will continue to manifest in my life. Teach. So uh, it's very important, I think, at this point as, a, as our church and what God wants to do in your life. Thank y'all for tuning in to the Dear Future Come on, can podcast. we give the Terrace R. Whitfield? <laughs> Thank you to the Dear Future Wifey podcast because I have found my Dear Future Wifey and I'm <laughs> declaring in your life today, those who are watching, those who are here, that God is not, the, he's not no respect of persons. What he did here, he can do in your life. And if you desire to be in a relationship that is of God, just raise your hand right here so I can pray, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. You said, ask and it shall be given. Seek, and we shall find. Knock, and the door shall be open to us. You says, if two or three touch and agree on earth as having anything, you hear us, and you will respond. So, Father, I come into agreement with every person who's raising their hands right now. And I ask that what you have done in our lives, you begin to do in their lives. Remove every obstacle, remove every person, remove every issue, so that, Father, their hearts are ready to receive the person that you're bringing into their lives. And I thank you for it now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You can put your hands down. And I want to just do a prayer. There may be somebody here today, and you're not saved. If you died today, here's my question. Are you 100% sure you go to heaven? Because if you're not sure you go to heaven, today's your day. On October the 6th, 1985, I made the decision to make Jesus Christ the Lord of my life, and my life has not been the same since then. He truly has caused the desires of my heart to come to pass. And so maybe you're here watching or you're here in the room. If you're not sure when you died, you'd go to heaven, I want to pray for you today. Or maybe you're here and you say, Pastor Evan, I'm saved, I'm a Christian. I know if I die today, I'm going to go to heaven. My question to you is, is your heart full of trash? Is it unsurrendered? Is the majority of your life being run by your own will versus his will? Because if so, I want to pray that you watch this. You resurrender your heart and your will to Christ. And then maybe you're here and your next step is to be baptized or you need a church home. It is time out to be spiritual homeless. It's time to settle in. Why? Because the scripture says those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. So here's what I want to do. There are some people that need to make some decisions today. I don't know who you are. But if one of those four decisions apply to you with every head bowed and every eye closed, and if you're watching online, I want you to give me a thumbs up if it's you. But if you're here in the room and you need to make a commitment or a decision based on those four things, you need salvation, you need to recommit your heart, 
you need to get baptized or join Word of Truth Family Church, all I'm going to ask you to do so I can know who I'm praying for is to raise your hand right there at your seat. If that's you, say, Pastor Evan, that's me. I fall in one of those categories. I need salvation. I need to recommit my life today. I want to join Word of Truth Family Church to get baptized. Raise your hand real high, real high, real high, real high. I see, high, I see hands going up. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait because there are some people. You're in decision. That means you're in the middle of decision. Jesus said, the day that you hear my voice, don't harden your heart. Because you don't know when your heart will ever be back in this place again. So I'm going to ask one more time. If you know you need to make a commitment today to Christ, would you just raise your hand right there at your seat? Because I'm going to pray for you. Thank you. I see all the hands. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can put your hands down. I'm not sure why those who raised their hands raised them. But I want us all to pray this prayer of salvation. And we're going to pray it together. Let's pray out loud. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you died for my sins. I believe God raised you from the dead. And today, I make you my Lord and Savior. Holy Spirit, come on the inside. Change me on the outside. Take me out of darkness. Put me in the light. Today. I surrender my life, I surrender my heart, I surrender my mind to you, Lord Jesus, in Jesus' name, amen. And Father, I thank you for every person who's made a decision to get baptized, join Word of Truth Family Church, or to recommit their lives to Christ. And I thank you for spiritual momentum taking place in their lives like they've never seen before, and it's in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody say amen. Come on, can we give the Lord a hand clap for a good day today?